All right, and there we go. <laughs> What's going on guys? If you wanna support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. Uh, just want to remind you, if you're not already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It does help us out quite a bit. Uh, like the video if you are not, uh, or if you are enjoying all the gameplay, excuse me. Uh, but subscribing to the channel does not only support the channel, but obviously give you entry into our giveaway right now. February 23rd, we're going to be giving away a Neon Dynasty Draft Booster box, a full box of draft, uh, of packs so uh, please do uh, enter for that there's more details about how you can enter of course on our website uh, as well as in a video here on our channel there are other ways you can enter so I do want to encourage you to check that out but let's talk about today's deck so I I realized uh, having faced Demir zombies a number of times and even talked about Demir zombies quite a bit because of things like necro duality that uh, I never actually played it, uh, which is kind of silly because I actually really love this deck. I think it's a very fun one uh, and certainly a very powerful one uh, because of Necro Duality plus just the resilience of the list. So uh, we are gonna try that today. We're gonna have some fun. So Zombies is very, very cool because we do have so much uh, recursion built in and a lot of extra stuff that we can do, but we'll talk about that as we go through. Uh, in the one drop slot, we've got Champion of the Parish, one of the all time like all star stars of this deck solely because every time another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, whether it's a token or not, which is crucial, uh, this gets a 1-1 counter. Now, very quickly, this is going to get out of burn range. So this is something that's either going to eat a removal spell immediately or it will uh, kind of get outpowered on the field and hopefully, or outpower everything else on the field, excuse me, and hopefully get in for quite a bit of damage. Uh, we do have Shambling Ghast here all-star in this deck we do have exploit uh and so this is a really good uh target for that because you can either kill something or get that treasure token as needed uh we do have tainted adversary this is uh not only just a good two drop because it's a two three with death touch but you can uh use that extra cost to pay three and every time you do you actually get a two two zombie with decayed which of course we can utilize to uh buff up that champion of the parish uh, Skull Scab, a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Exploit, and then whenever you exploit a non-token creature, you create a 2-2 two, two black creature. So we're we're basically leaving something behind every time we exploit uh, a non-token, which is very, very good. Uh, Giralf is in here. I know some lists don't run him, but I actually really like him. Uh, this, is, this gives all of your zombie tokens flying, uh, or it's just zombies in general flying, which is kind of awesome. You can uh, pay a blue, tap it, sacrifice another non-token creature to get an XX blue zombie creature token where X is that sacrificed creature's toughness. Uh, now, what this allows us to do is if something gets targeted with a removal spell, we actually get to utilize this in response uh, and hopefully kind of fizzle out the spell, but also get something uh, behind as well. Uh, Fell Stinger, we can uh, throw it out as a death touch or exploit it, draw some cards, uh, or even deal the last couple points of damage to our opponent. I mean, keep in mind, target player draws two cards and loses two life. We can use that on the opponent just to deal them two damage and hopefully win the game. Uh, Headless Rider, another option for leaving some tokens behind. Very, very good. Uh, and then Overcharged Amalgam is our last creature, which is a counter spell on a stick. We do have to exploit to do so, but it's a flash flying threat. Very, very good. Uh, now Necro Duality is going to double all the creatures that enter the battlefield uh, that are under our control essentially. Uh, we basically get a token of every zombie we play. Agonim's Awakening allowing us to replay a lot of stuff from the graveyard. Infernal Grasp and Blood Chief's Thirst for a little bit of removal, Wash Away for the counter, and then Deadly Dispute to give us a little bit of card draw here along of course with that Fell Stinger. Uh, in the uh, in the, the techie lands area we do have a Hall of the Storm Giants and two Hive of the Eye Tyrant. I like having more hives in this than Hall of the Storm Giant. While this is more powerful, this is easier to actually activate. It also deals with stuff in the graveyard, which is pretty useful in this meta. Uh, we do have Field of Ruin as well as a one of to deal with opposing uh, man lands, things like that. So I'm excited, guys. Like I said, I'm surprised I haven't played this deck yet, uh, but I was searching through and I was like, you know what? This is one that I need to play. So we're gonna jump into it. We're gonna have some fun today, hopefully get some wins. Let's see what we do. 
All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. It's not a super exciting hand, but we do have a few of the lands we need and the turn one champion with the skull scab uh, following that up. So I do actually like that to play quite a bit. Now, it obviously spike field hazard is a thing. Chances are we may lose this champion very early here, which is okay. Uh, again, we kind of expect some of that, but hopefully we can get around it. Uh, let's go here. Hmm. I don't know if I want a Tainted Adversary or Scab. I think we actually go Tainted Adversary here. Uh, the reason being... Uh, the reason being this does have Death Touch, whereas the Skull Scab does not, so we can start getting some attacks in very quickly here. This also spreads the threats out, so this obviously more of a long-term threat, but this is something that you have to think about as well. They're gonna have to kill it, uh, and obviously they're gonna take that opportunity now, which is kind of fine. Uh, works for me. Okay. Uh, we get to Shambling Ghast here, uh, and I think I may take the opportunity now to go ahead and i don't know part of me wants to go ahead and exploit here but i think i'm actually going to take the opportunity now to just go ahead and kill this smoldering egg they may have a faded hope or you know something along the lines to bounce this there it is the fading hope that's fine uh kind of curious as to why they didn't use it to save their smoldering egg but that's fine by me uh we do reset the champion to do that that's okay though we should have done that in reverse order. That was actually a bit of a mistake, technically, but that's okay. All right, first things first, let's attack in here. Let's do this. Uh, I am gonna exploit here just to give ourselves that extra treasure token. Um, we get that 2-2, that's gonna buff up the zombie. I'm gonna not play the other champion quite yet, though. Uh, I kinda wanna save that that treasure token for the overcharged amalgam if we need it. Uh, or just drop this down on the next turn here. But this is really kinda the lock on the game, I believe. Uh, and so I wanna keep that around. All right, let's just go ahead and attack in. Easy enough, nothing too crazy. And we'll pass. We get to leave up that overcharged amalgam. We can exploit with the token, and this is perfect. All right, we'll auto pay here. This is exactly the kind of thing that we'd like to do. Uh, let's go ahead and exploit that and get that gold span dragon out of there before it can deal any amount of damage to us. Uh, all right, so we do want to play these pre-combat so that way our champion actually gets a little bit bigger here so let's go ahead and drop both of these this is going to protect us if they happen to have a sweeper of some kind and they are down to one so let's hope we can do this uh we are doing pretty well so far and there we go we got the win that was a very efficient game that worked out perfectly that overcharged amalgam man oh what a card all right let's jump into game two all right guys here we are for game number two and uh yeah i mean a pretty easy start it's not a super powerful one but i definitely think we can keep this and go for it here uh we can lead off with the hive and drop that champion Next turn, we'll probably just end up having to leave up that Deadly Dispute. Uh, hopefully they can't kill this right away. Uh, looks like they cannot, which is great. Great. All right, let's do this. We'll just attack in here. Uh, and again, we'll just leave this up and see what we can do. Be great because we actually can then ramp into the Necro Duality. So that's actually not that bad. Uh, sure. Um, I guess we just pass here. We'll drop that Headless Rider. Uh, don't love how this play pattern is working out, though, because they can just fight some stuff off here. Uh, so I don't really love that. But at least the Headless Rider is going to drop some 2-2s two if that is the case, which is helpful. Uh, just because then we can kind of deal with whatever they do. They are just going to fight that off, but we do get that 2-2 two -two in response, which is great. Uh, and truthfully, just a land would be great right now. <laughs> Okay, uh, technically a tapped land, so not exactly the best, but I'll take it. Uh, let's actually attack in with the Headless Rider here. Um, all too happy to do this. If they want to trade off, that's fine by me. I really don't care that much. Um, we get this, the 2-2 two -two in response here. Ah, okay. So let's go ahead and sack this. 
we'll get that treasure token and another tutu, uh, as well as a couple of cards here, which is helpful. Uh, okay. Perfect. So, that's okay. It's not great for us, obviously. We kind of expected them to have some kind of uh, combat trick there, but this really just kind of sets us up quite nicely here. Uh, we'll double block, I think, here. And if this dies, great. Uh, and it looks like it will. Perfect. So we did get their card draw mechanic taken care of there, which is really the key. Uh, I do kind of want to save this Agadim's Awakening. A little worried about going too crazy here because they do have just a lot of stuff that they can do. Um, I think what I'll do, though, is take a turn to play the Necro Duality. We've got quite a bit of life total to play with here. Uh, hopefully it's enough. They do have five mana, and this is a mono green deck. Wow, okay. That was not good. Uh, <laughs> that was definitely about the worst thing they could have here, so that's a little unfortunate, but we'll do the best we can. Um, okay, so... We can... Drop this. Uh, so we do get a token of this. Um, we actually get to exploit this to get another token, which is actually to, uh, I'm gonna decline. Yeah, uh, this having trample is a problem. Um, but what this does is really set us up for the overcharged amalgam this turn. So if they happen to have any other play, we can counter it uh, and get two overcharged amalgams. And if we need to, we will multi-block for this. Uh, let's go ahead and Sacrifice here. Uh, we'll exploit one of these uh, to counter that. Uh, we'll decline to exploit again. And now we can triple block. <laughs> uh, it's not ideal, but it is an option. Wait, 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 wait. Six, seven, eight, yeah. I think it's just the best option for us. Uh, if they happen to have a snakeskin veil, that would really suck. <laughs> All right, good thing they didn't. Uh, they do get the little token on the back end here, which is kind of annoying, but uh, we'll see what we can do about that. All right, land is kind of helpful. Uh, let's see. So we can actually go crazy here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So. We've got three mana available for the Agadim's Awakening, which would give us three creatures. Um, doesn't give us the overcharged Amalgram, is the only one that we don't get. Uh, I'm gonna go for it. We kind of need to set things up here for ourselves, I think. Uh, and we do get, of course, um, multiple things here. So the Necro Duality really does help us out quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Sacrifice a creature. Do we want to sacrifice a creature? I'm going to decline, I think. Uh, all right. And there we go. <laughs> what a turn. Uh, that's kind of the craziness that happens with this deck. When you've got that Necro Duality out, man, you can really go crazy. All right, cool. Well, that was fantastic. Let's jump into a game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'd like a little bit more black mana in particular, but I think this is a pretty easy keep. We'll go for it. Uh, no real good turn two play, obviously, but that champion of the parish can really do a lot. So we will see how it goes. There's our second black, which is great. That also gets us to Necro Duality mana, which is huge. Uh, fully expect they're going to have things like Frostbite to deal with this champion. That's kind of unfortunate, but hopefully we can just outpace them long term here. Uh, and that Necro Duality giving out extra tokens really kind of hinders the burn decks. Like if we can make it to that, uh, the trick is that because we're getting two of everything that we play essentially, uh, they really don't have a great option to deal with it because they can deal with one of them, sure, but there's a second one they gotta, they gotta worry about as well. So let's see. Interesting, okay. Didn't see that coming, I like it. Uh, let's just drop the Headless Rider here. Not a super exciting play, but it is something we can just get out there. I expect they can burn it. Um, but we're going to get a 2-2 in response, which is kind of the key here. We just want to give ourselves that exploit trigger with the Fell Stinger if we can. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get there. 
Uh, again, anything like this is really going to make a big difference. Um, I'll block. That's fine. Uh, if they want to discard to get rid of uh, this, that's cool. Looks like they don't. They're probably just going to burn the token, but we need to get the pressure off of ourselves a little bit here anyway, so I'm okay with that. All right. Maybe they don't have much. Cool. Uh, easy Necro Duality turn. We just go for it here uh, and pass. So now from here on out, we're actually in pretty good shape because we can do quite a bit. Uh, and we do have Jeroff in hand as well. Uh, I would love an extra land. If we can get an extra land, what we could do is drop that Skull Scab, but then also have a three drop to follow that up, uh, which would be just fantastic. One thing to note here, uh, Jeroff is not exactly ideal with Necro Duality, but if we've got like the Headless Rider as an example, this, uh, well, no, excuse me, this is a zombie. Never mind. It's not a zombie. My fault. All right. Uh, okay, I think we definitely go Fell Stinger. So that's going to create a copy. Uh, I am going to exploit the token. So we can draw a couple cards here. If we do get a land, we're in good shape. Ugh, we didn't. I mean, we did, but it's not a, it's not a land we can really utilize here. All right. Gotta hope for the best here. Uh, fortunately, this does have Death Touch, so if they can't just zap it, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, and then, of course, next turn, we actually have quite a bit we can do. Uh, sure. So they're going to give this first strike so they can get the attack in. Not going to take the block. That's fine. All right. Uh, let's drop the Headless Rider. It's going to give us a copy of the Headless Rider. And then let's go ahead and drop that Skull Scab as well. Uh, sacrifice a creature. Do we want to sacrifice a creature? Uh, I'm going to do this. So here's the trick. We get a lot of extra little tutus for doing this. <laughs> uh, and we can not do that. Um, all right. I'm just going to pass. See, that's the power of Necro Duality. Uh, and now we can just kind of freely block some things. And if we lose some stuff in the process, it's really not that big of a deal. We also just have Jeroff here. So like at some point, we actually just get to attack in for quite a bit here. Uh, and that's really, really good. Obviously, they can put all these uh, onto this if they would like, but we can just multi-block and it's fine. OK, and they're not even going to do that. Cool. Uh, so we can just drop another one of these, uh, which is kind of funny to me. Uh, alternatively, we can leave this up or just go ahead and play Jeroff, uh, leaving up Deadly Dispute, perhaps. Um, you know, we're here to have fun. Let's play the Necro Duality uh, and we'll just pass here. Um, I'm not in a strong position to just attack, given that we've only got nine life. It's just not something I really want to risk here. Uh, and if they do draw a burn spell, that deadly dispute can kind of fizzle it. So it really doesn't matter. Um, very curious to see how this actually goes. I really like this deck, by the way. <laughs> okay, so they are going to do it. Perfect. Let's go ahead and sack this. Uh, yeah, we're going to get a lot of little tutus for this. <laughs> uh, and we draw two cards and we get a treasure token. We only get two. Excuse me. It's whenever a non token. Pardon me. That was my fault. Uh, thankfully, now just champion of the perished does like a lot. <laughs> OK. Uh, I think we're in pretty good shape here at this point. Like, I don't feel like we're under too much pressure. Certainly they can boast this and get this attacking in, but we can just freely block it for one and not really worry about it. Uh, it doesn't get trample, so I I'm not terribly worried about that. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So the question is, do we want to... We would need, what, three blockers? Yeah, I'll take a three for one. Uh, we've got so many tokens at this point, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so let's just get rid of the threat. Um, and, oh, I guess we didn't even need to do that, but that's fine. All right, cool. Awesome. That was really good. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> let's uh, we should have done this in reverse order, but that's OK. I don't think it's really going to matter. Uh, let's drop this. <laughs> uh, 
And let's drop Jeroff here. <laughs> Alright, yeah! <laughs> uh, we'll attack with just the tokens. <laughs> that seems good. <laughs> <laughs> just in case i don't know what they could draw so like i don't really want to deal with anything and uh this just kind of saves us sure you get a thermo alchemist good for you uh yeah i'm feeling pretty good about this yep that's an undefeated run people undefeated run all right let's talk about this all right guys so demir zombies with that necro duality oh man what a deck uh i'm so happy we actually got to test this one out again i i don't know why i haven't really previously uh this just seems like right up my alley but it worked fantastically we got an undefeated run with this list um you see the power level of in particular necro duality as well as just the recursive features of this deck and by recursive, I don't even just mean like bringing stuff back, but the, the features of if you kill this thing, we get something in return. We still get a 2-2 that can either block. That doesn't nullify any removal by any means, but it certainly makes it like half as efficient, if that makes sense, because you're still getting uh, something in return. Even sweepers in that instance, you kill everything, we get a lot of stuff back if we've got a full board. So very, very resilient to removal this deck and obviously very powerful, especially with that Jarolf, as we saw in that last game, being able to give everything flying is uh, hugely, hugely powerful. So I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I certainly hope you guys did. Please feel free again. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are not already. It really would mean a lot to us. And you are entered to win that giveaway. So kind of awesome. Double whammy there. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys very soon.